All right, so here's what we're going to be learning today. So the way it is right now, if I swap my pieces before, those pieces were just appearing out of nowhere. So today, we're going to be adding a neat little effect where they kind of drop in from up above. So I'll just show you that again, and they drop in. So let's get started. All right, so where we left off, I'm able to swap my pieces, match is detected, um, columns collapse, and then new pieces spawn in. What I want to do today is I want to make it so that I have a little bit of an effect where the pieces come in, these new pieces. Rather than just popping into existence, I want them to kind of fall in from outside of the scene, which will make it a little bit more, um, I don't know, pleasant to look at at least, at least more interesting. So we already have most of the code needed for this. We have a move method in the pieces themselves that uses a tween node, and that's how we have that nice, cool-looking elastic feel. Uh, so let's um, use that to our advantage and get started here. So what I want to do is I want to take a look at my refill pieces method here, which we created last time. So down here in my refill pieces, right now I'm adding my piece uh, directly where it should be. What I want to do instead is I want to add it uh, a certain amount above where it should be and then use the move method to move it to where it should be. So in order to do that, I'm going to declare a variable up here in my global variables. And I'm going to call that y offset. And let's see, where should I put that? I got my touch variables, I got my pieces, my piece array, I got my grid variables. Might as well put it with grid variables here. So, um... I'm going to do this as an export, and this is going to be an integer, and I'm going to call it var y offset. And this is going to be how much above everything I want the piece to start, and then I'm going to have it move to where it should be. So to make sure I remember how to use that move method, I'm going to go down here and take a look at my swap pieces. So move, and I have to tell it... Um, what pixel coordinate I want it to move to. Okay, cool. So then down here where I'm uh, refilling my columns, uh, I'm going to set its position not to ij, but rather, uh, let's say, i and then j minus that y offset. So remember that in um, Godot, Upper left hand corner is zero, 00. So if I do minus offset, that's actually going to be above just plain J. And then I'm going to have it move to where it should be. So I'm going to say piece.move. And I want it to move to its actual position to grid to pixel ij. Um, okay, cool. So I'm going to save this. So I'm going to save all my scenes. Let's pop out so that I can set that Y offset in here. So I'm going to start with a Y offset of, say, 5, which will put it 5 rows above where it should be. Um, let's try this out. So let's play this scene. All right, so let's make a match. All right, cool. That's not too bad. 5 is probably a bit too much, though, because the move method requires that it happens only in a small, a certain amount of time. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, let's say 2. And let's play the scene, and let's see how that changes our, our movement here. So make a match, column collapse, that's a little bit better. All right, cool. Now, our pieces are still just appearing when we hit play, which I think is actually fine. I think they don't need to slide in at first. I think it's just when they're being refilled that it probably looks better if they're sliding in instead of just appearing out of nowhere. Uh, however, if you yourself wanted them to slide in at the beginning of the game too, you would just have to change uh, your piece up position, change these two rows right here. Um, I'll even show you. I'll copy this, and then I'll go up to where I'm first creating the pieces, spawn pieces, and I would just have to change these two lines. So I'm going to paste that in, and I got one too many indents, so let's fix that. 
and that should make it so that they're going to slide in to begin with. But see, it happens so quickly that you almost don't even notice it. So for me, I don't think it's necessary. I think it's fine just to have them start. Um, it's just the popping into existence that's the issue. So, all right, cool. Uh, again, another fast video today. A um, few things we have to talk about before we can start getting into some really fun stuff. So first, um, we're not chaining anything. So if I make a match, there could be another match on the board and it won't be deleted until I make another move. So we need to fix that. We need to make a state machine so that once you move, you can't move again until everything's all settled. And we need to make it so that if we make a move that doesn't make a match, the pieces swap back. So like, for example, if I were to swap these two, we want them to swap back. So that's uh, what's gonna be coming up next this week. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the description down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join my Discord where I'm chatting pretty much every day. Um, you can give me a like if you learned anything new. Feel free not to though if you don't want to. And yeah, have yourselves a wonderful day.